Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Rohde with AskTheLawyers.com and welcome to another episode of Ask the Lawyers. Car insurance is a requirement to drive in most states in this country, but many drivers still don't carry enough insurance or they don't carry any coverage at all. And when someone gets into an accident with an uninsured motorist or an underinsured motorist, of course, many problems can arise. We're thankful to be speaking with attorney J.D. Smith today of the Seattle-based law office of J.D. Smith. He's offered representation to injury victims for more than 20 years. He's been recognized as one of Washington's super lawyers for at least 15 years. Thank you so much, J.D., for being with us today. Thank you for having me. How big of a problem is this, J.D., in Washington state there where you are, people driving without insurance or without enough insurance? Well, st statistically, the public should know that one in eight drivers are uninsured. 12% uh, of crashes in Washington are caused by or hit and run collisions. And in my personal experience, more than 50% of my cases are where the at fault drivers are underinsured. So in Washington state, I understand that you're required to be offered this opportunity to get this kind of coverage, correct? A correct, but you can sign a waiver to waive the coverage. In Washington, when you buy liability coverage, you have to be offered PIP, personal injury protection, and uninsured motorists or underinsured motorists. In some states, they're sold separately, but in Washington, they're codified under one statute. And what I noticed is a lot of people are buying their insurance online and they are shopping for lower premiums and they click through waiving this coverage without knowing it. So, J.D., is this insurance, this coverage, the additional coverage, is it very expensive? And No, it's not very expensive. And it, it, of course, varies depending on your age. But if you compare it to the liability coverage, it's usually a lot less. What about this, this type of coverage? Do, the, do those policies apply during hit-and-run claims? Yes, although in Washington, hit and run claims have a, a, a somewhat unique requirement. And that is you have to, one, you have to call the police, but you also have to have an independent witness that's not in the same vehicle with the driver. So in other words, you have to be able to collaborate that it was in fact a hit and run driver. And this is uh, of course designed to prevent fraud. Right, I was gonna ask you next. So, so say a person is hit by someone and they suspect that person is uninsured or whatever. How easy are these benefits to actually obtain? Well, they're somewhat difficult because we see a lot of the marketing campaigns about um, insurance companies and it seems friendly, but in the uninsured motorist or underinsured motorist context, the insurance company stands in the shoes of the at fault driver and that relationship becomes adversarial. In addition, there are a lot of nuances and complexities to this coverage uh, that a lot of people are unaware of. And this is where having a lawyer that deals with this on a regular basis comes in handy. I can, I can imagine. How can that lawyer help? Say, I don't even know who hit me in, in an accident. Well, th this is one, the lawyer could get a copy of your policy to confirm that you have the coverage. And it doesn't say that you have to call the police right then. So if for some reason you didn't call the police, you would still be afforded a reasonable time to contact the police. The biggest way, in my opinion, that a lawyer can help when a person is hurt is the lawyer can focus on the legal matter so that the injured person could focus on their treatment and getting better. So let's help viewers understand if they do get in an accident like this, what are the first steps that he or she should take following an accident? Say, first of all, that you suspect someone is uninsured or underinsured. Well, you know, the, 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 it may seem like common sense, but the first thing is get to a place of safety. And no matter what, always call the police. Uh, a lot of people for, in, in not only in hit and run situations, but when they're in an accident, it seems like a cordial exchange and they maybe forget to, or decide not to call the police. But a lot of times people uh, change their minds and they challenge the facts of what happened. So I believe you call the police, document the scene, exchange information, including driver's license number, and take pictures documenting where the accident occurred. Okay, let's give some takeaways to people uh, who are watching who may, uh, maybe they don't even know if their coverage includes this 
uninsured motorist or underinsured motorist coverage. What steps could they possibly take to make sure they are protected? I think they should establish a good relationship with their agent. Even in situations where you buy online, you should have access to speak with a live agent. I, I personally prefer having one local that you could speak with in person, but things change. And at least if you could have access to someone online, an agent would be able to explain. In my opinion, you should have a higher limit, uh, but nevertheless, you should have the coverage. The minimum in our state is 25,000, but that's woolly inadequate um, for someone who's injured very seriously. And going back to the statistics that you told us about at the beginning, I would imagine you encourage everyone to take that option in your state and take that coverage. Yes, it's sort of like um, uh, air conditioning in the middle of the summer. You'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Yeah, in the long run, it'll, it'll pay, pay off well um, if, if you are in an accident. J.D. Smith, thank you so much again for talking with us and providing us all of this information. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you won't miss another episode of Ask the Lawyers. I'm Leslie Rohde for AskTheLawyers.com, where you can choose a lawyer that lawyers choose.